Alert. Alert. Disengage current mission. Superman return. Dropping. Impossibility. Drive recalibrating. Prepare for re-entry. Initiating. Death of Superman. Reign of the Superman. Returning normality. Three, two, one, begin. Okay, what is happening here? Where are we? Glix, give us a situation report. Currently we are on the planet Geekery. Be warned, our impossibility drive may cause distortions as we traverse this land. Impending impossibility engaging in three, oh gosh. two, oh one. Comms are now open to Devoted Geeks. Hello, Devoted Geeks, and welcome to episode 62 of Com Talk, the podcast extension of Geek Devotions, the YouTube show from Devoted Geeks who are devoted to letting people know that they are loved. I am Celeste, and with me is... Dallas! And as you listen to this podcast, please interact with us. Send us your thoughts on what we are saying via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Simply look for Geek Devotions on all those social media platforms, and you'll find us very, very quickly. Also, do us a favor if you guys could. Uh, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and... Uh, it kind of because it helps people to find out who we are yeah. and decide whether or not they want to listen to our podcast, even though we've been on hiatus for for a little bit. Ever, uh, <laughs> right? And if you're listening to this on on YouTube, please comment uh, as you listen because that's kind of cool, and uh, we'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. So let us explain to you guys what has happened. Uh, Celeste and I have been trying to repair the impossibility drive. And um, we're up to here in <laughs> Greece. Oh, my goodness gracious. So my taco machine is out again because of us trying to fix it. <sighs> not I keep happy. telling you the taco machine to it's not take priority. We have to fix the impossibility drive first. Ta- but tacos. I know. I know. <sighs> Anyways. So we're at trying least to get, we got it back from retro. At least we got it back from retro. You're absolutely right. Uh, it was I kept having these weird dreams, but anyways, <laughs> but as we're we're trying to fix it, and we were in the middle of Sector Ten, Superman Returns, and everything went haywire, and we had to drop everything, and, uh, and including the salsa, right? Oh my gosh, the sal- salsa everywhere. We have to everywhere. clean the salsa up still. Oh my goodness gracious! I think there's some dripping from the ceiling. How did that happen? What did you do, Dallas? That was not. I- I'm going to blame Glicks on this. Glicks, <laughs> Glicks. What, where are we now that we've, we've narrowly escaped Sector 10, where are we? We are about to continue on to Sector 11 of the Superman District. Due to the impossibility drive misfire, we skipped through the Superman Return Sector. Sector 11 is the death of Superman and the rise of the Supermen. To navigate through here we will need to discuss our likes and dislikes of these movies. Our opinions of Superman and Lois Lane, and if these are movies worth watching. All right. Understood. All right. Well, guys, let's get into this as we talk about the death and return of Superman. I'm kind of excited about this, Celeste. Except it's not the death and return. Well, it kind of is. It's the death of Superman and the reign of the Superman. This is true, but I'm calling it the death and return of Superman. Whatever you and Glicks want to call it, you can. But I'm calling it this. Why? Because when I first read the story, that's what it was called. When I first read the story. A little backstory for you guys. As a child, um, my local library had comic books and they still do by the way your library has comic books for those of you geeks yes, out there ours has gotten quite a few quite a few but um my local library had one particular book that i loved <laughs> just one comic book. well they had tons <laughs> it was an omnibus of the death and return of superman that's what it was called the death and return of superman and it had all the stories because this was a, this was a comic book arc that took place back in like 93 i mean right. it was a huge event massive event and um, thanks to Comics Explained, which we'll have links in um, the uh, website version of this. Yes. Because uh, um, Comics Explained kind of helped me to remember the story. Because I haven't read this since I was a kid. Right. I tried tracking this down and I found it on Amazon. It's really hard to find, actually. Right. Well, you can buy like the individual books. But I wanted one big omnibus. But the action, to get the omnibus, because I think the omnibus actually has more than what the individual books are that uh, like Barnes Noble is selling. Mm-hmm. It's like 150 bucks. Not in our budget. Not in our budget. <laughs> so, but I, I really want it. I really do. But anyways, 
Um, <laughs> I, he kind of helps me remember everything I read from when I was a kid. So I have a, I, this story has always been in my head. This, this thing where here you have this Superman, this Ubermarch who is godlike, near indestructible. And he is destroyed by a being, a mysterious being. And so we're going to talk about this because DC Comics, uh, our DC Universe has the movies. Yes. That's how we watched it. We watched it on DC Universe. So thank you to our patrons. Yes. Because you guys have made this possible. But um, we watched, we shotgunned both movies. Yeah. We actually, we had a day off and so we, we watched them all together. Right. Now, I've watched both movies before. You Same. watched... No, I watched both of them. Did you, you watch both of them? I thought yes. you just watched the one. No, we watched both. Okay. But we've refreshed ourselves. Now we're ready to go to talk about these movies. So, because this is such a parallel to the comics, mm-hmm. we're going to take a little detour with this conversation. Okay. Uh, we're going to do our normal, you know... Did we like the movie? Did we not like the movie? We're going to talk about whether or not this is a good Superman or that Lois is good. But I do want to talk about the parallels between the comics just a little bit because it's interesting to me. Right. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with these animated adaptations of comic book stories. <laughs> because sometimes I'm like, that's so cool. And sometimes I go, dear God, please stop. Dear God, what is that thing? <laughs> oh, hush. Shh. It was bad. Somebody's going to get that reference. We're not in the Batman world. (laughs) Do not bring that up. Right. Okay. So um, where do you want to start, babe? Do you want to talk about um, our opinions about Superman? Yeah. Lois? Let's do it. Or do you want to talk about the movie? Let's just talk about the overall if we liked it. Okay. Let's do that. And then break it down. Sure. All right. So. All right. So. All right. So. Celeste. Yes. What did you think? Well, I guess here's the real question. Because this is technically two movies. Mm -hmm. Now, you can buy the Blu-ray where it puts everything to one. But as a whole, part one and two, all together as a whole, did you like it? Yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the look at the other characters. This is something that I appreciate, at least with the Superman (laughs) animated movies that I've seen, is they bring in everybody, Mm -hmm. even if the story is mostly focused on him. Okay. So, like, I appreciated Diana because she's my favorite. Um, (laughs) I liked the general world. I liked that Nathan Fillion was the voice of Green Lantern, Mm. using his Nathan Fillion wit. So... (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, overall it was, it was an enjoyable story. It left you feeling emotional when you needed to be emotional. It left you feeling happy when you need to be happy. I mean, it really, it did a good job of being a good movie. It did. Um, I'm going to agree with you. Not As a kid's a whole, movie though. Huh? Not really a kid's movie though. It's not. And that should be noted. Um, these are not kids movies. These DC, you know, these DC animated movies um, I would put a pretty good PG, PG-13 on them. Yeah. Depends on, on how mature your kid is. Yeah. Um, because they're not, they're not for kids necessarily. Mm-mm. They're not like the brave and the bold and stuff like that. Um, that being said, I'm going to agree with you. I think as a whole, it was better. I mean, it was good. It was a, it was a good movie. Like I enjoyed watching it. Yeah. There wasn't this like, like I remember when we watched Superman Returns. Yes. It's such a long movie. Oh, dear Lord. That just didn't end. Like, we got an hour into it, and we're just like, let it end. This, I never felt that way. No, the pacing was really good. Great pacing. Um, the Great story arcs, in my opinion. Yeah. Characters were brought in. They were brought out. It was good. Um, Things were handled. It, it was funny. Yeah. You had moments where you could laugh. And then like, like I legitimately wanted to cry at the end of the first part was Superman. I think that I didn't this time when I watched it, but I also knew what was coming. Right. The first time I watched it, I had no concept of the story. And so the first time we watched it, I got pretty emotional because Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Lois going, oh my God. Oh yeah. Like 
I understand, I can, I can sympathize with her. And that speaks to the writing that speaks to the voice actress that speaks to a lot Mm -hmm. of talent, bringing all of that together. Absolutely. So there's a lot of play here that I really enjoyed and you really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Um, now for me, and this is where we're kind of bringing the conversation, the comic books. Um, again, I read these years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, thank you to comics explained the YouTube channel because they they have a great series of videos for you guys to watch if you want to check it out where he explains what happened in the books mm-hmm. so you don't have to read it because it's a lot yeah but he does a really great job of going into the backstory of things I didn't realize at the time uh, when this came out Superman was on the down people didn't relate to him and so they're trying to come up with a storyline to make him relatable yeah they were going to have him reveal his identity to Lois propose get married and that was going to be their thing but. Lois, Lois and Clark, Clark. <laughs> which we loved. We loved was a thing. And so there was a contractual agreement that they couldn't do that storyline for a little bit. So frustrated, they were like, let's just kill him. And they're like, wait, that's a good idea. <laughs> so they went on this thing where they created, they had to figure out how to do it. Because, you know, you had all these characters that had tried killing Superman. They actually killed Superman back in the 70s once. And so they had to like make this really feel like this was a permanent thing. And something like there was an this intimidation, this fear, right? Mm-hmm. Like comic fans needed to go, wait a minute, what are you doing? <laughs> I have to wonder if the internet had been as big of a thing as it is now, what would have happened? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, you remember the the crap storm that happened when it came out that Cap was Hydra. Right. Like y- people were losing their minds. Absolutely. So I have to wonder if that would have happened had they done this story. Mm. With current day right. internet. Exactly. Now, the crap storm that took place when everything happened with Superman or the death of Superman. Mm-hmm. Part of it was their buildup. And that is yes. one thing that the movie was lacking. Yes. But th- I don't think they could. Now, for those of you who didn't know, leading up to the death of Superman, Again, they had introduced something to cause people to go, is this final? And to be believable, like there is this this super creature who mm-hmm. is so powerful to kill Superman. And so they created Doomsday. They created this being. But their introduction was, was genius. Because mm-hmm. you only saw bits of him over a series of issues. Yeah. For like a couple of months. You just see this fist punching through the ground. Mm -hmm. And then you see this giant creature in this weird green suit reach his hand out almost like um, like Frankenstein's monster. I remember there was a movie where where he meets this little girl and then he kills the little girl by accident, by accident. It almost looks like that moment. I remember reading this, Mm -hmm. uh, the comic, and I remember seeing like, oh, what's he doing? And then this like bird lands on his hand. And he crushes it. And at first, just you just look at the panels with the words, you go, does he not know what this is? But then you see laughing. Like the artists have drawn in in these creepy uh, letters. And the, the typography is amazing. This is what I love about the art form. It's because they really, they were able to put things out. You realize he's laughing in joy. Like he enjoyed smothering the life of this bird. And that well, was- that's a, fun. Yeah. That was the first glimpse of it. You have the sense of who is this? Was that Frankenstein you're talking about or Doomsday? That was was Doomsday. Okay. I thought you were still talking about Frankenstein. No, no, no. But that reminded me of that scene with Frankenstein with the little girl. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. But with Doomsday, it was not. It was an accident. It was very much on purpose. So you had this buildup of Doomsday. You couldn't do that in the comic. Mm Mm-mm. That was my one thing. You mean the movie? I mean the movie. That's the one thing I didn't care for in the movie was you couldn't have the buildup of Doomsday in the first aspect of it. However, I love the fact that they spaced the movie out. Because this this is, just to be honest, two movies, but they're actually one movie. Yeah. This wasn't a part one, part two. This was was one long movie. Yeah. Because it was shorter than a Lord of the Rings movie. Right. But I mean, it's an hour and a half just on this. Yeah. So I think they did as much as they possibly could. Introducing Doomsday, introducing the character of him in the movie and the like, okay, this is not a good guy. This is a bad deal. And 
all this stuff leading up to the death of Superman at the very end. Mm-hmm. And like you said, like at the very end, like you're watching the scene. Lois, and for those of you who haven't watched the movie, we, we're going to have some spoilers, but she's, you know, she's just discovered who Clark is, which was a callback to what was supposed to be the original script mm-hmm. of what was going to happen. They were going to kill Superman off of her first. She just found out that Clark Kent, that Superman, is actually in love with her. Mm-hmm. She sees love of her life in a crater dying. And mm-hmm. she's picked up a rock and tossed it at Doomsday. Yeah. Like, like this is jumping ahead subjects a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I honestly, because of that and just how they've portrayed her overall, mm-hmm. I love this universe as Lois. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if she's my favorite. Because honestly, unless they just annoy me, the whatever which one I'm watching is my favorite at the time. <laughs> Um, and, unless they scream too much, right. uh, <laughs> but like just the, she knows she can't take this thing on, mm-hmm. but she knows she's got to do something. Yeah. So I loved it. Like, like it, like I said, I loved it. It was, they, they brought in these story elements that made you feel for the characters. Mm-hmm. Like it was really thoroughly enjoyable to watch, to experience. You hurt when you're supposed to hurt, you mm-hmm. laugh when you're supposed to laugh. It was well done. Um, since you brought it up, let's talk about the Lois. Yeah. I liked her. I yeah. like you. I thought she was well done. She wasn't whiny. No. She wasn't the angry feminist. No, but she was independent. independent. Yeah. Like, it was a good balance. And I think that I think they did a good job pulling in the character of Cat Grant mm. to show the more vulnerable side of her Mm kind of like with Lois and Clark when they showed her eating a thing of ice cream and crying over a romantic movie Mm -hmm. but she's all tough and not no nonsense the rest of the time right they used her as a device to go hey she's just a normal person Mm -hmm. but she's gonna do what she needs to do to get the story right so I thought she was good um what'd you think of the Superman character Superman himself because it was such an odd thing for him I don't know Like, I appreciated them bringing in the struggle of him telling Lois the decisions to bring her into his secret and then having to protect her because of it. Right. The the, Is he willing to put her in that much danger? Right. So I appreciate that. Um, I mean, he was, because it's the animated, he was classic, super strong Superman. Right. Um. So I don't know. It's I liked him, but I don't know where he rates, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't see the stereotypical Superman stuff That's with true. this movie. That's true. So but at the same time, I think we saw a pretty good glimpse of it. I yeah. mean, when he was Superman, when he wasn't Clark Kent and he was Superman, you had the the knowledge of who of what was going on. Mm-hmm. His desire to protect the city, protect people, even to the point like in the in the first half of, of the story, he saves Luther. Yeah, like he goes like no, that was the second half. Mm-mm. No, that was in part one in the death of Superman because that's when he killed. That's when he killed. Oh, you're Doomsday. right. Yeah. No, the okay. Um, what I'm thinking of is the funeral, and that was part two. That was part one still. Never mind. <laughs> Disregard. So, but he saves Luther, even though he didn't have to. Yeah. You know, he, he still had that sense of, and like, you could see that he's looking at Luther. And he's like, yes, I've saved you. It's what I'm going to do every single time. And of course, Luther's losing his mind. Right. Because Luther's like, I want to be the champion. And it's like, no, nope, not today. So you still had this sense of like who he, like he was to the core. He was the Boy Scout. Mm-hmm. He was Superman, taking care of things. Yeah. Um, part two in the reign of the Superman. I don't think we see him very much. No, it's really not about him. Right. It's not until like the last maybe 20 minutes you see him. Yeah. And um, which I love that even. Yeah. Um, I appreciated that artistically he looked like he did in the comic book where he's wearing this weird black suit. It's actually my favorite suit. He's got the mullet going on, which was indicative of the early 90s when that first <laughs> happened. 
I mean, he's he's strapped up with guns and stuff. <laughs> he goes to fight. I loved it. I thought it was great. I appreciated that they did that because, I mean, if he had been in stasis for that long healing, mm-hmm. he would have been, his hair would have been grown out. He would have been scruffy. He would not have had all his powers. Right. So I appreciated the realism of that. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was good. And even then, like, like he still carried the sense of, I'm going to take care of things. I thought it was a little bit of a cheap and I don't remember how the, how the comic book ends, hmm. but the whole, like I have an ACE in my hand or ACE in the hold. And he takes the, the crystal with wild the card. eradicator. Yeah. Wild card with the eradicator inside of it and downloads it in cyborg's head. That was kind of cheap. That was kind of a weird thing. I don't remember if that was in the comic or not. No, yeah. maybe. I don't know. So, but it was interesting. I enjoyed it. I think that that worked, though, Mm -hmm. because like I know it kind of comes off as cheap, but with all of the buildup and all everything that was happening, they had to finish it quickly or it was going to be a much, much longer movie. Like they could not take the time on that fight. Right. Because of everything else they were doing. It was still a long fight. It was. It was still lengthy, but enjoyable fight. So. All right. So. We've talked about what we like about Superman. We talked about what we like about Lois. But what about Clark? Again, with this one, it kind of blurred Superman and Clark for me. I kind of liked that. I did too, because you could tell he was having trouble keeping things separate. This, more than others, I think, really kept in mind Clark and Superman are two identities of the one person. Mm Mm-hmm. And you saw that blurring because and it was such a pr- crucial thing. He's having to bring Lois into his life. Yeah. What does that look like? How does that work? I feel like this was more so than the previous iterations we've seen where that was a, a real balance, a real struggle. Yeah. And I think that had any of the other stories been about this, they could have had the opportunity to do that. Mm-hmm. But it because of what was going on, because he was struggling with wanting to tell Lois, not wanting to keep secrets from her, but at the same time wanting to protect her, mm-hmm. that, you know, he had you had to see both blend for this story. Right. So that when he tells Lois that he is Superman you really see the two personalities come together. Yep. All right. Well, I think we're in agreement. I think we've enjoyed Superman. Yeah. We enjoyed Lois. We enjoyed Clark. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk, we're going to break this down and go, is this a good film to show people if they're interested in getting into Superman? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll catch you guys after the break. Hi, I'm Francisco from the Retro Rewind Podcast, and as always, I'm joined by... I'm Paul J. Powers, and they call me the Master Interrupter. Yeah, I wonder why. Uh, it doesn't matter, because you're listening to Com Talk. Com's returning to normal stasis in three, two, one. All right, and we are back from our break. I want to encourage you guys to go check out those amazing individuals that you just heard, uh, because we love them, and we appreciate them, and that's the reason why we do their commercials. So, that being said, Celeste... Yes. We've had a very, very chilled, very good conversation about Mm -hmm. the death of Superman and the reign of the Superman. I think it's now time for us to discuss whether or not this is something to be recommended. That being said, the second movie, The Reign of the Superman, I think you and I need to discuss that a little bit more before we can make an honest opinion. Recommendation. Right. Because, Because, well, well, what were you saying? Nope. Well, because it it dealt with so much more than just Superman and Lois. Really, in the reign of Superman, it wasn't about either one of them. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, but it wasn't. It was more about what does the world look like without a Superman. Right. But it also introduced a literal, a literal world of individuals. It did. That you're not used to. Now, you have to understand the DC Universe... Animated movies. I'm not sure what mm-hmm. they call this universe. I don't know. You. They've been building a universe in the animated series. Right. Every one of these more modern ones, they are connected in some fashion. It's all fairly loose, but. Right. 
there's callbacks, there's introductions of characters and stuff like that. The first Justice League, Amer- uh, not Justice League America, the first Justice League animated movie that they put out a couple years ago is directly tied to this one. There's references to this event in other in other ones that they've put mm-hmm. out over the last couple of years. And so there is sort of this extended universe that's going on here. And so there's a lot to take in right. going into this. There was even a couple in this movie, these two movies that, you almost had to have reference back to previous movies to understand, to fully get it. Yeah. That being said, it's not, because you know me, I'm the, I have to watch everything in order person. Mm -hmm. Um, You still understand what's going on. You just don't get all the jokes or understand all the players completely. Exactly. And so keeping all that in mind, it wasn't bad. No, not at all. If you come in raw, haven't watched anything else. I think you can follow along the story. Absolutely, because I did. Yeah. When we first watched this, I hadn't seen any of the other animated ones. Right. Um, in the second movie, though, The Reign of the Superman, it introduces some characters that are quite interesting. It introduces Superboy. Yes. Introduces the Eradicator. It introduces Cyborg Superman. Mm-hmm. And also introduces Steel. Now, for those of you who don't know, these are four individuals who showed up in the second half of the original comic book run of the return of Superman. And um, for the most part, the stories were pretty, pretty on point Mm -hmm. uh, with what they had going on in the comics. However, again, they only had so much time to give you backstory. Yeah. And these, some of these guys had their own stories all together. And so it was kind of like, they kind of just, flash forward through a lot of stuff to right. kind of give you an idea of who these guys were. So let, let's break this down for people real quick. Superboy is the clone of Superman. Yes. And Lex Luthor. Yes. It's the combination two, which you and I talked about uh, when we watched, we see him in the first movie. He looks like at the beginning of uh, the Rebirth series, Super, Superboy Rebirth. Not right. Rebirth. Um, New 52. New 52. Sorry. Thank you. Which I was like, oh, that's cool. But in the Reign of Superman, which is what I love the most is he was dressed mostly just like he did in the nineties comics, which I'm like, <laughs> yes, like I, I got my haircut to look like his haircut in the comics. I really did when I was a kid. Right. Then you have the eradicator, which is a sentient or sentient sentinel, uh, Kryptonian sentinel who's supposed to do, like protect Kryptonians. And, but he's got like no chill. Like no he's like black, white. Chill. That is it. There's no, there's no compassion. Yeah, no grace. Then you had uh, Steel, who I love. I do too. I need more of Steel. John Henry Steel was so cool. He's much better than um, than what Shaq def- uh, played him as back in the '90s. For those of you who didn't know that, check it out. Shaquille O'Neal uh, Steel. That was the name of the movie. Um, do not do not go into it thinking this is a good movie, <laughs> but. Is that going to get onto your list? That of might movies? go on my list. And then you had Cyborg Superman. Cyborg Superman, of course, being um, he looks like Superman. It looks like they could have put Superman back together, but it turns out it's a very different individual who's psychotic and evil. And apparently, now in the comics, is a major villain for the Green Lantern Corps. Really? Didn't know that. So these are the individuals. That's what this is most stories mostly based off. And so, me having comic book knowledge, I was able to take this and go with it because I appreciated the fact that it was, I read the extra stuff. I understood mm-hmm. what was going on. You did not have extra comic book knowledge no. necessarily. How was it for you when you saw these guys hit the screen? I mean, I think that they did a pretty good job of introducing them. You met Steel in the first movie mm-hmm. briefly. Um, well, you, you, not as Steel, though. Not as Steel. But you met the character because mm-hmm. even when he's steel, you meet the person. Right. And well, so in that case, you did all the, all four of them you met. Well, you did. Connor wasn't sentient yet. No, but he was there. He was there. <laughs> he was floating. Um, you know, you you sort of met the eradicator because you knew the computer and I couldn't the second go around I couldn't remember who he was. I knew that he wasn't somebody who stuck around. Mm-hmm. 
like like if they were if they I honestly haven't seen any of the other movies, but if they continued with these characters, that he was not going to be one that stuck stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the other one? Cyborg. I knew that I didn't like him, but I couldn't remember if it was because of the CW Supergirl. Right. Because Cyborg Superman is the original Hank Henshaw who Martian Manhunter was emulating to yeah. survive on Earth. I didn't appreciate any of that. <laughs> he didn't like any of that storyline <laughs> on Supergirl. So, but like I knew that that I remembered that he was bad. Right. And even in the beginning of it, because we had just watched that storyline, I was like, oh, he's not going to be good. Right. Like, because I had that previous knowledge. Yeah. Now, completely erroneous because they did nothing the same as what the CW Supergirl had done. <laughs> but it was it was already in my brain. Right. So, I mean, I was able to follow along. I was able to get my favorites. Mm-hmm. Um so, I mean, it wasn't hard to follow. Sorry, right. I rabbit trailed a lot to get to that point. It, it wasn't hard to follow. <laughs> all right, so all that being said, can we honestly recommend these movies to somebody who's like, you know what, I'm interested in the Superman thing, or like, you know, I like Superman, but I haven't watched it a lot. You know, can we recommend these movies? Yes or no? <sighs> I think it depends. Okay. So if it's if you're coming in fresh, no. Really? This is not a good. I have no concept of who Superman is. I got you. I got you. But if you're somebody who's like, eh, I've no Superman. I've kind of watched the stuff. I've kind of know who he is. Yes, absolutely. This is fantastic. Right. Like because it's such a good storyline. Mm-hmm. But to give you a true essence of who Superman is. You kind of need to already know that right. in order to appreciate the struggle that he's going through in these movies and then to appreciate the world at loss mm-hmm. when he's gone. Right. I agree with you on that. And I can see your point about somebody who's just fresh off the street, never seen anything about Superman whatsoever. But even still, this is such a good movie mm-hmm. series, like the two movies together. It was well done. Oh, yeah. I think you come in raw and you'd be fine. I think you could be introduced to everybody and go with it. Uh, So I highly recommend this to everyone to check out. I think it's a great, great story. Um, Again, I wish I had the comic (laughs) so I could read it again. Um, But it was good. And to be fair, I had to push past nostalgia. Mm -hmm. When I first watched it, I was like, man, this is so good. And um, going into our podcast, I I was really balanced going, okay, did I like it because of the nostalgia reasons for it? Because I read the comics. And I have to say no. Because I hated Hush. Mm, yes. Like I I greatly disliked what they did with Hush. And we heard about it for a good weekend. A good weekend. You make it sound like it was like just nothing all I said. <laughs> Pretty much two days after we watched it. Just small comments. At really random times when it didn't relate, <laughs> meaning that you'd been thinking about it. It just ticked me off. I know. So, so yeah, I think it was good. I think I can highly recommend this. And um, for a variety of reasons, great story, mm-hmm. um, great uh, writing, great art. It was based off of the uh, New 52 stuff. Yes. Which I don't really care for, the Superman New 52. But it was it was all really, really good. And I feel like there's a lot to pull from it, just like you could do it from the death of Superman mm-hmm. from the original comic books. You know, you had this concept of this this great and powerful being dying. And you have people rushing to fill the gap of where he's at. And nobody really be able to do it well because it's that being, but they're trying their best. Yeah. You got some that are coming in a right spirit. Like, Steel was coming in a right spirit. He's like, I am not the man, but I am doing my best in yeah. honor of him. And then you had people like like the Eradicator, who was, again, I am not Superman. What he was saying, he was Superman. But he, no mercy whatsoever. I think we see that in life. You know, it, as Christians, you and I, um, we, we've seen that throughout history. Oh, yeah. You know, people try to step in, try to be like, you know, well... I am not Jesus, but I'm doing this as best I can in memory of him. She's really carrying the essence of him. And then you have people who come in and are like, you're like, yes, I am the Lord. And you're like, wow, you're a heretic. You know, <laughs> you're leading people to hell. Yay. But you have this weird thing going on here. And um, 
So I feel like every bit of it is just a good, good film I can recommend to anybody. Mm-hmm. So any final thoughts before we close this up? Um, if you have opportunity to see this movie, you should. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we want to say thank you to our patrons. Yes. For supporting us and for making it available and being patient with us. Thank you guys so much for being patient with us with this whole podcasting thing. So that being said, we're going to transition to announcements. And then after announcements, uh, Glix is going to give us our final trajectory through the Superman district. Because we almost have the impossibility to drive fixed. Almost. That's how we escaped from Superman Returns. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> Still need to fix the talking machine. So let's get to announcements. Now, transitioning to announcements about things you need to know. All right, so upcoming stuff here with Geek Devotions. Um, we are slowly but surely rebuilding things. Yeah. It has been a wild ride for yeah. us for the last several months. Yeah. Um, trying to get back on track with some stuff. We shifted our Bible studies to Thursdays. Yes, which then, we forgot about this week. Then we forgot about it this week. I'm so sorry. And then um, October 31st, we're not going to have the Bible study because we have family coming over. Yeah. So we're working on it. We're <laughs> Bible study is going to happen, guys. We're, we're reworking the Bible study. Uh, our streaming schedule is coming back in alignment, too. Yep. Um, recently, Celeste and I put out a thing. We want to know from you guys, what kind of films and movies would you guys like us to cover and do yep. devotions on? Um, we had one suggestion already. Oh, did we? Gemini Man. Oh, that's right. And so um, highly interested in that. Check it out. I am, too. I like Will Smith, though. <laughs> so... But we want to hear from you guys. You know what? What is your what drives you guys? What would you like for us to cover? Um, the podcast is going to start to hopefully once we get through Superman District. Podcast is going to take on its usual form where it's a little more random, yeah, um, and a little more impossible. <laughs> impossible. Right? Sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, we also are celebrating October this month. Yes, we are. What is that? All of our devotions for the month of October are based off Tim Burton movies. So far, we have done The Corpse Bride and The Nightmare Before Christmas. I believe the next step in the lineup is Beetlejuice and uh, Edward Scissorhands. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited about that. It's our, our level of spooky. Yeah, we're, that's, we're, that's, the limit. That's, that's pretty much, <laughs> I think... Beetlejuice is kind of pushing the limit, honestly. So it's just weird enough and funny enough that it doesn't quite hit the the and we're done level. But it's it's really close. <laughs> <laughs> As we were watching it, because I watched it for the first time. Right. I'm going, oh God, do we need to not do this one? So that was a real conversation for us. Yeah. So it is that definitely at its limit for us. Yeah. So, so you're welcome, viewers, <laughs> devoted geeks. We are pushing our limits for you guys. It is literally just that is the edge of us. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably about it. We have some personal convictions about some of this stuff, and so, yeah. so, but yeah, but I'm excited. October's great. Yeah, we've featured artwork. Yeah, we have. Um, so it's been fun. Mm -hmm. Enjoy it. Um, what else do we got going on, Celeste? Okay, and so I think for our last announcement, we are going to be having a Devoted Geek together this month. Yes! And so originally we had said that we were looking at the 19th, but I entered into a baking competition that yeah, is on the 19th, and yeah. I don't know how long that's going to last. And I'm going to have diabetes by the time you're done with it. Because you're eating all the cookies, because I can't. <laughs> um we did pass some off at church last week. Uh, so we're looking at the 26th, and we're also looking at going to Rolling in the Dough, what? which is a local place that does really good burgers. Really good burgers. So we, we have to contact them because we had been going to do it, and then... We, things just came up. Things guys. just came up. Like I said, we're restructuring a lot of things right now for... For our own sanity. Yeah. And for us to be able to give you guys what you deserve. We are learning our limits. That's a key thing. Well, I think that's going to be one of the first podcasts we do after. After we get out. Yeah. Is the fact of how we're learning our limits. Yeah. Because that's important. It is. So, uh, well, there you go. You have a sneak peek for two podcasts from now. Word. Three, two, one. Penguins. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to that later. Um. But yeah, we're looking at the 26th 
for the pot for the devoted geek together yeah so dale you have a potential date right <laughs> <laughs> our friend dale who is in the devoted geek life has been asking about it because i think he really enjoys it he likes coming and hanging out with us and we like hanging out with him yep so um yeah looking forward to that always enjoy hanging out with you guys the devoted geek life uh, and having these Devoted Geek Togethers. You guys are amazing. And for those of you who listening to our podcast for the first time, you're like, what is Devoted Geek Life? Devoted Geek Life is our um, our Facebook group page. And so just type in Devoted Geek Life, pops up. We'll add you, and you can be part of the party that takes place there all the time. All right, with that being said, Glix, what is our next destination our final sector will be 2016's Batman vs. Superman. All right. I am excited about this. It's just because Bats is going to be there. It is. So, now, some of you guys will be like, well, what about Man of Steel um, and all the other stuff? We we'll could... talk about that when we go into the limits co- Good podcast. Good into the limits, right. Um, but that being said, <laughs> just so, if you guys want to watch Batman v. Superman and you want to ha- be on the same page as Celeste and I, when we get to it yes which will be in two weeks we promise this it is time. happening in two weeks batman v superman is coming out baby it's coming for you uh we personally are going to watch the extended edition yes the director's cut because it's the better cut because it's the one just from past viewings it's the one that makes more sense right so that being said if you don't have the extended edition that's perfectly fine you'll be able to follow along with our conversation you may just learn some new things that you didn't hear or learn before. Mm-hmm. So, that being said, we are going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to Calm Talk today. If you've loved this episode, head on over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It is very much appreciated. So, until two Sundays from now, stay devoted. Peace and love.